Okay, so in the current meta game, these are going to be 25 card effects that you and me, we keep forgetting exist. Now, not all of them, and in fact, most of them are not going to be relevant for most of your games. However, personally, I feel like this is the type of stuff that will win you a game three on the bubble at a YCS. I'll try to keep everything as short as possible so we can get through these 20 cards in a reasonable amount of time. Let's get right in. First card, Salomon Great Almirage. Now, most people probably know that you contribute this card, so a monster that you control cannot be destroyed by card effects this turn. However, what I personally always forget is that when a normal summoned monster is destroyed by battle, you can actually revive Salman Great Almirage from the graveyard for free. This is going to be free link material and it's an additional protection for card effects, so don't forget this. Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. I just recently got aware of this fact when Sam released his new video where Jesse Cotton showed off his new Phantom Knight deck. He uses this really cool effect which I personally forgot is that you can make any monster on the field with Anaconda a dark monster and this is super useful if you want to use super poly use an opponent's monster that was originally maybe a water or fire monster to make it a dark monster use super poly and make your starving venom or you can basically make rusty badish with any monster third card ip mask arena now everyone knows that you can link with this card in your opponent's turn but the second clause many people forget about including me it makes it so that the monster that you link some with ip mask arena cannot be destroyed by card effects and this means not only when you use it on your opponent's turn with its effect but also just if you regularly link it off as a link material. So whenever you have IP in your extra deck and you want to make a link three or a link four even, you can use IP as sort of a sidestep to make it not being able to be destroyed by card effects. This is really nice and comes up very often. Number 38, Hope Harbinger. It negates spells, everyone knows this. It can also redirect attacks. In 2019, this was quite prevalent with the Thunder Dragon combo that you face in their end board. They usually try to redirect the attack to the Heretic Seal, but the third effect is something that prior to making this video, I didn't even know existed, which is that if another Exceed monster that you control is destroyed by battle or card effect while Hope Harbinger is on the field, you can target any Exceed monster on the field and make it gain the attack of the destroyed monster. Hope Homager is honestly just nuts. Abyss Dweller gains 500 attack if a water monster was used for its Exceed summon. Usually we only know this card for being able to shut down the graveyard effects, but who knows, maybe at some point you will mind control an opponent's monster that's a water monster, you will use it to make your own Dweller, and there you go, you have a 22 Dweller instead of a 17 one. Stardust Charge Warrior is a card that we've seen in some combo variants. In Virtual World it is currently also seen play. It draws a card on summon, probably most people know that, but I feel like an effect that is a little underlooked maybe is that it can uh, attack all special summon monsters your opponent controls once. Now, to be fair, it only has 2000 attack, but I think that in some games this can definitely come up. Maybe if you want to clear your opponent's field and you don't have too many resources, don't forget that this option exists. Gigantes used to be this combo piece in that Emancipators, but it actually has this really neat effect where if it's destroyed by battle, you can destroy all the spell and traps on the field. This is basically how I won every game against True Dracos back then. I just ran into the True Draco monster with my Gigantes, blew up the entire field. It skill drain it out there can be only ones just an amazing effect overall nocto vision drag actually has a super neat effect where you can banish it to negate the activation of a card that would target a face down card that you control maybe you end your dragon link combo with an impermanence face down and he goes cosmic cyclone on the back row you can just for free banish that nocto vision dragon from the graveyard to protect the impermanence so this definitely comes up wing dragon of Ross fear mode is a card that out combo boards it is currently not seeing too much play every deck right now in the game needs their normal summon this card cannot be attacked and cannot be targeted by card effects in the end phase after you tributed their entire field and gave it to them it actually returns back to you and if you don't have a follow-up for outing the board sometimes they cannot out this really well they cannot attack it they cannot target it so they need like a weird way of removing it like in gear Su or something this definitely comes up orcus nightmare cannot be destroyed by battle with link monsters I don't know how many people have tried to Boral Sword OTK with this card on field, but uh, number 11, halfway through, Prologue of the Destruction Sword. This card sends for cost, summons a Buster Dragon, it is a pretty nutty card, but on top of all of the effects it has, you can also banish it from the graveyard to protect a Destruction Sword card you control to not be able to be destroyed by card effects this turn. Imagine this scenario, you have Buster Whelp and Ecclesia in your hand, and it's somehow turn three or something. You normal the Buster Whelp go effect, your opponent goes gamma. Instead of the Buster Whelp dying and you not having a play, you can banish this from your graveyard, protect the Buster Whelp, go into Link Karibo, and special summon the Ecclesia. Now, this is an additional interruption that you wouldn't have had, so it's amazing. Paleozoic cards in general, but specifically maybe Paleozoic Dynamiscus have this 
neat effect where they can special summon itself from the graveyard when a trap cut is activated. Now, generally, if you're a Paleozoic player and you played that back in the day, you uh, would never forget this, of course, but uh, if you're like me and you didn't play back then and you only know this card from being splashed into like Buster Bladers or Shadows, you keep forgetting that this effect exists and this is gonna be free link material you can make a black luster soldier link monster in the following turn if you special summon this back from the graveyard for free or you can make a link spider go into like anaconda this is just really important to know about and makes a difference between maybe winning a game or losing goes against snow rabbit one of the most iconic hand traps probably at this point in comparison to the other ghost sisters can also be activated from the field a scenario where this could possibly come up is let's say we're in a format where no material is being played if you get no material on the hulky fibrex you can summon out the ghost ogre as sort of a last resort because you will have an interruption during your opponent's turn ghost ogre and snow rabbit is only negated during your turn so this is sort of a cool play that you can make thunder dragon 2 seems like the one card that none of my opponents ever wanted to read somehow uh, this card has four effects and all four of them are relevant you can special summon itself banishing a light and dark monster this is clear to everyone it gains 300 attack when a monster effect in the hand is activated doesn't have to be a thunder dragon monster it can also be a danger effect or something similar if it destroys a monster by battle you can banish a card from your graveyard doesn't have to be a thunder dragon card can be any card Add a thunder monster, it doesn't have to be a thunder dragon monster, once again can be any thunder monster, from your deck to your hand. And this is now the most important part that everyone forgets is that in the end phase of your opponent, you can return a banished card from uh, your banished pile to the top or the bottom of your deck. And believe it or not, my good friend uh, Marcel, he lost the card market series finals because he didn't remember that this effect existed he could have uh, put back the chaos dragon levianir back on top of his deck he forgot and this is a very human mistake of course everyone makes these it just goes to show that these things really apply and these are things that uh, you should always remember phantom sky blaster is a card that on normal summon it creates tokens up to the number of monsters you control that's probably the part that everyone knows but during your standby phase you can actually inflict damage to your opponent up to the number of sky blaster monsters you control who knows at some point this might come up in time or something I don't know, it's just really funny. Aloof Lupine, and you can already see that I went through my Thunder Dragon deck lists from back in the day. But <laughs> this card uh, makes it so on normal summon you can banish a Thunder Dragon monster and banish th another Thunder Dragon monster from your deck, for example. Many people always forget when it's destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can actually return a banished monster back to your hand. So if your opponent, for example, chains Gamma to it, you actually get back the monster that you banished, which is really nice. Dragon Blast Destruction Sword is a quite unhealthy card that probably no one of us really likes all that much but it actually has a neat interaction where if it's equipped to a monster you can special summon it so if you equip it with your union carrier to your savage dragon on the following turn if you need an additional extender for boral sword or something you can actually unequip it and special summon it to the field zodiac ram ram is probably one of the better zodiac monsters right now when someone would use impermanence they would forget that ram ram can actually negate the activation or rather the trident which gains the effect by the ram ram so never forget that if you have ram ram under it your Dryden or whatever Exceed monster is above it is protected by trap effects. Sky Striker Ace Rose is one of these cards that it's just a substitute for another better card, in this case, Ray, and you just really use it to make Link Summons. At least that's what I always felt like. But then my good friend Philip, he told me that it actually has a really nice effect where it can out Dragoon very easily. If an opponent's monster in their extra monster zone is destroyed by Batsil or removed by your card effect somehow, you can actually summon the Rose back from the graveyard and negate an opponent's monster non-target until the end of the turn. This is extremely nice because if your opponent goes, for example, Anaconda, makes a Dragoon, you can destroy the Anaconda by battle, use the Rose in the graveyard either to just bait the Dragoon or if you already baited it, you can just negate it and then just use an Afterburner or something afterwards. This is totally nice. Okay, last card, Salomon Great Circle. Probably all Salomon Great players will laugh at me, but I feel like especially since this card came to one most people and by most people i mean myself mostly uh forget that a second effect exists on this card which says that you can target a salmon grade monster you control that was link summoned by using its own name as a link material and make it unaffected by monster effects this turn i think this effect is incredible it's something that i keep forgetting about and something that probably comes up in a game three around 12 AYCS. Anyway, this is going to be it from me. Let me know in the comment section down below which of the mentioned effects you also keep forgetting and maybe which you didn't even know about. Hope you guys loved it. See you.